Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I've decided that we are going to send a rover to our moon base. Our moon base is fairly spread out and Kerbals need a comfortable ride to get from place to place in. And also I was interested in trying this rover pod. Uh, it has space for, it doesn't really say... Um, yeah, actually it doesn't really tell me how many people sit in it, does it? <laughs> I guess it, it's got space for enough people. It must be. It's 3.3 tons. It's got to have plenty of space for Kerbals, right? Well, at least it has one because it needs one crew to control it and needs a lot of resources. 1.5 electric charge per second, it says. Might need more electric charge. I'll think about that. We'll see whether it actually draws that electric charge. And then there's the wheels, right? Uh, good impact tolerance. A really powerful reaction wheel. In fact, it could probably roll on the surface all on its own without the wheels. But, yeah, we'll try it out. First, I'm going to try it on on the runway to see how it works. And that'll inform us about the electric charge as well. We've got the solar panels on top, but they might not be enough. And you can see that we've got fuel. And that's partly because I had no idea how to mount the rear wheels on this. I needed a tank there. And since I was going to put a tank, I decided I might as well... Uh, go ahead and l have it land on the surface of the moon on its own. Uh, it's got 900 meters per second, so the stage that we send it to the moon with uh, will probably start the landing off just so that we have adequate margin for precision landing. Not that it needs it, it could drive over, so there is that. I don't know if I trust that the twitch engines are going to work through the center of mass. Again, we have a strong reaction wheel, but I'm not too sure how well this is all going to work. And so we'll be putting who at risk? Jebediah. Well, that just about figures, doesn't it? Let's try it out on the runway. Okay, it picked orbital view even on the runway. Okay, that's already nearly 8 meters per Okay, I don't like the capture camera. Okay, ground will be fine. And no lip at the edge of the runway around here. This is the first time I've decided to drive in KSP2. Taxiing separate. Uh, I mean, taxiing I've done, but driving, no. Let's see. Whoa, okay. I might need that reaction wheel after all. I thought it'd be pretty heavy on the wheels, and it was a little bit light, but... Our thrust weight ratio with the two twitch engines that I've got here is not good enough to lift off of Kerbin. It will be plenty for the moon. They have eight degrees of gimbling. They're not very efficient engines, but they're convenient to tuck into things. Whoops. Like that. And... They have the great gimbal. So, I'm hoping the gimbling will save us if the center of mass moves around. It shouldn't move around too much. There's actually not that much fuel on here, and there's a lot of dry mass. Ah. Uh, that just happened. I was just pressing W. Jab. Okay, well, um, reaction wheel. I was tempted to put solar panels that would help us tip over. Uh, come on. Roll. On the moon, it would probably be able to roll. Okay, we are all turtle-like. Let's, uh, let's revert to launch. Let's see if it happens again. We'll take the same path. Ah, it's frozen on revert. It doesn't like reverting in this version, I know. This is not the first time it's uh, frozen on revert for me. I'm gonna have to restart the game. Yeah, it, it really doesn't like reverting. Performance is better in this version, but there are definitely... I, I don't know if it's less buggy. Now, incidentally, when I dump the fuel in the tanks, the center of mass doesn't reflect... Oh, Well, that was just me. But this gives me a good chance to see if I can revert to launch at all. Well, this time it decided to. So yeah, I couldn't see the center of mass moving at all when I dumped the fuel from the tanks. And this has been a problem otherwise as well. It doesn't seem to have a center of mass change when fuel gets removed. Could be that the center mass doesn't change when fuel gets removed, but that seems unlikely. Now, it, it uses electric charge when I'm moving. It recharges when I'm not 
using the motor. So I'm not pressing W right now, I'm just letting it coast and it's recharging. So that's good. I should put a ladder on there. One thing that affected the design of this was the fact that we have a side mounted door or two side mounted doors instead of a door in the back. Oh, let me check that out. First of all, let's check the brakes. So it rears up when I'm using the brakes. And the brakes sure don't slow down very convincingly. On the moon, it's got to get less traction. So it'll slow down even less. Okay, so brakes. Why wanted Jeb to EBA. I wanted to see which one he popped out of. He pops out of the right one. Okay. Let's try for speed. I want to get to the VAB. I have no idea what we came out of. <laughs> they don't have a space plane hangar. I mean... Presumably this drove all the way to the start of the runway in the first place. Maybe it flipped out because it hit its maximum speed, then that's why. We'll, uh... Not push it beyond, like, 20 meters per second or something. Let's just keep it coasting like this. I'm not gonna apply any force. So I'm not touching the keys at all. I'm wanting to see whether it does something weird again. Oh, did you see that little twitch? Yeah, I didn't do that. I'm not touching anything. It's really good at coasting. Thinking about whether I need more battery packs on here, I'm thinking no. Not for our purposes at the moment. Maybe we could, like, circumnavigate the moon by land? <laughs> I mean, that could be a great adventure. How long would that take? I don't even know. Okay, I am now control- Oh, look! That! Right there. See that? I just uh, adjusted our uh, course pressing D a little, a little bit, just a little bit, in order to avoid going off the runway. That was it. Just like three small presses of D, and then it spun around like that. So there's probably a death trap, but we'll send it to the moon anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's just another base module. We'll just keep it there. We'll see if it rolls around a bit. I'm curious to see what happens to these things, okay? So, it's not like I expect this moon base to stay safe. We're not expecting it to stay safe. We're expecting things to blow up. And uh, this might accidentally roll around and find itself two kilometers away in various pieces. And I want to find that out. So, um, yeah. Let's recover vessel. Interesting camera it picked after I recovered Vessel. So I'm thinking with this is we're going to put it on a launcher that's gonna get all the way to the moon. So we're not gonna have a separate stage getting it into lunar orbit. We'll just uh, build a launcher with enough Delta V. So I'll get to work on that. Okay folks, I admit that recent rocket explosions may have made me a little bit eccentric in my rocket design. What we have here is one of the big nuclear clusters that we have. What are they called? Uh, the Swerve. The Swerve engine. 10 tons, uh, 5 different chambers, 700 kilonewtons, really good ISP. And of course the hydrogen tanks for that Swerve engine. And then a series of SRBs because the Swerve engine sure isn't getting off the ground on its own. And the SRBs are thrust limited to 80%. Uh, the engineer report says that we have a thrust weight ratio of 1.6, so actually let's uh, knock that down to 70% maybe. Okay, uh, that's probably safer. And we are going to put a Kerbal on this. <laughs> um, but the Kerbal is Tim. For some reason, after the previous, uh, after the test drive, it's not giving me Jeb again. So I don't know what happened there. I, I thought, I think I recovered Vessel. Maybe I shouldn't have recovered Vessel. Maybe I should have reverted there. So, we are not going to be allowed to put Jeb in danger, unfortunately. Uh, so, the root part is currently the controller on the launcher right here. 
not the rover on the on the top of the decouplers. We are using decouplers. We're not trying to recover this launcher, obviously, so hopefully that'll be good. Um, let me tune these decouplers so that the docking acquiring force is minimal. And we don't need fuel crossfeed on. And we have an additional reaction wheel there, but the rover also has a pretty powerful reaction wheel. And that's the idea. So let's see what happens. I've called the rocket Nuka-Cola because of the nuclear thing, but I don't think this is an approved Nuka-Cola color. Okay, here we go. Ignition. Uh, I always say ignition first, but it's not really ignition. It's the countdown start. We'll go up a bit before trying to turn. Uh, the only gimbling engine is the... Uh, whatever it's called, Swerve. Appropriately named Swerve, I guess. I'm trying not to swerve. We'll see. Uh, I guess we'll tilt a little bit. Uh, we better not do too much. Okay, let's see if it can hold prograde properly. This is just so that we don't flip out. We probably should be turning much more vigorously than this, but... Uh, yeah, I should have turned down the thrust on the boosters a lot more. Oh no! Oh no! I, I, I'm using all of my control authority. We're getting into a really high orbit. <laughs> I guess it'll give the nuclear engine some time. Okay, booster set. And fairings. I think we can cut for now. We'll certainly have enough Delta V to do the job. If I like it enough, I'll try to turn it into something recoverable, but who knows. Hopefully the Apoapsis side is on the moon side. Let's see... Uh, yeah, the Apoapsis side is more or less on the moon transfer side. In other words, we're going to hit the moon over there, so our high point is on that side. So it's not that bad. It could be worse. We're doing the transfer over here. Yeah, we didn't lose... I mean, not that we didn't have overall main Delta V anyway, but... I don't like to be inefficient about things. This one turned out alright. Okay, that looks good to me. This will end up being my first undocking in lunar orbit. We'll see how that works out. Heard bad things about docking and undocking in lunar and Minmus orbit. I've said some bad things about docking and undocking in Kerbin orbit, so I don't know which is worse really. I should have put more lights. Oh well. Not that the lights do much. Okay, go. Lots of plume with this. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio now. Okay, that'll be fine. Out we go. We need a nuclear jump rover. Like, it has like four nerves on the side. It can get anywhere, but it can also drive on the surface. I forget if we've got the really big wheels. We have a lot of inclination around. Uh, we'll just use the engine to correct that once we get into the SOI. Okay. Yeah, we're practically polar over here. I should have put headlights. Why didn't I put headlights on the rover? Gosh darn it. I don't know if I want to land directly. I want to land in daylight. We'll wait. One, go. Oh, uh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where? Where? Oh, hold on. Okay. Um. Yeah, this engine is way more powerful than I'm thinking because I'm used to the nuclear engines being weak, and this one isn't. We will smack the nuclear stage into the surface of the moon. For disposal. Don't worry, the moons are quite irradiated anyway. It'll be fine. 
Just a little bit more radiation to join all the other radiations. Uh, I wanted to keep it high for time warp, but we'll see if this works out. Make sure all of our fuel on the rover is fine. I will save. This, this is sort of a test. I will save before decoupling the rover, of course, and testing out whether rover balance is correct, because we certainly haven't tested that. Okay, we're just time warping until the landing site is in the daylight. Okay, well, we obviously need to tilt our orbit as well, but the landing site is clear. Um, we'll tilt our orbit here. Okay, well, that's a lot to spend, but we have it, so we might as well spend it. Okay, and go. We have overwhelming Delta V, but for future payloads, they're gonna be much heavier. This is, you know, a good, good sort of deal. Well, this engine can stop on a dime, really. And retrograde, actually. We also turn super fast right now. Uh, I think we're we're out of control. Oh yeah, we've got phantom torque. Uh oh, it's happened. I didn't even decouple anything. Well, maybe, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Okay, that'll be our nuclear space, uh, nuclear stage disposal location over there. Let's see if this still can work. Uh, let me control from here. And go undock. <gasps> I controlled from there! Poor Tim. <laughs> oh, I should have put a controller on top. I forgot about that. Oh, gosh. We're gonna have a heck of a time trying to figure out what orientation I need to be in. On the bright side, we can just drive over. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just cut all the horizontal velocity I can. Okay, looking good so far. We're quite far away, but it'll be an interesting drive. So yeah, if you don't have a controller in the right place, which I didn't, um, cut horizontal velocity and then go straight down by just pointing at the horizon is probably the best deal. Okay. Oh, we've got some sideways. Um, it's probably alright, but let's just roll to kill the sideways velocity. Got a little bit of a sideways thing, but we've got wheels. It should be able to take care of this. Some sideways. Okay, we're on the ground. Okay, cut. Driving time. Oh! Ooh. Yeah, it's got bad traction. Let me take it off of SAS. Oh, man. It's got... It, it's like... Sinking. Um, I turned off auto suspension. We need traction. And more braking power, too, probably. Traction level. Auto traction control. What's the drive limiter? Maybe we'll go with traction level. I don't know about the drive limiter. Okay, now let's see what traction level 5 does for us. Just more of this. Um, okay. Oh, we we needed a much heavier rover, I guess. It's just whiffing. Again, we could roll over to the base, but it's not ideal. 
sort of running the wheels without taking any power, though, which is suspicious. What does drive limiter do? I might regret this. I mean, I think we want to reduce that, maybe. Okay, let me, let me just say 5%. And if one thing doesn't work, try the other thing. There's no avoiding the fact that the center of mass on this is high, because, well, the rover cabin is like that. Okay, I'm just gonna... They didn't say how we had to get there, right? <laughs> the wheels, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you guys can tell me about the wheels. I'm not good at cars. Okay, I think it's the reaction wheel. Let me just turn off the reaction wheel. Torque enabled. Torque disabled. Okay, now let's retune the wheels. We'll enable the torque again if we need it. Okay, motor enabled. Traction level 5. Okay, let's try. Well, it's not getting much traction. Maybe traction level... lower traction level will be good? Maybe if I add a little bit of thrust. It'll lift us up a little bit. I, I'm getting the feeling that that's not a good idea. If we're really stuck, that would be a thing to do, but... Okay, let me try the reverse. 0.5. Doesn't make much sense to me, but... No, either way, we're not moving. <laughs> I'm so tempted to use the engines. Okay, well, how about just rolling over with the torque from the reaction wheel? Remember, uh, this should only be done by licensed professionals. Oh, that's that's actually beyond tolerances there. I mean, it was sort of doing it on Kerbin anyway without me wanting it to, so maybe there's just this natural mode of locomotion. It's roving. I mean, we need a definition of what a rover is, I suppose. Somebody said uh, in the comments, but aren't the... Uh, Reaction wheels too OP anyway, and yeah, yeah, they are. I have to say that the crunching sound as we smash into the surface sometimes is very, very satisfying. The reaction wheels don't seem to take any power, which is probably good. Actually, the motors are enabled right now, and they're not taking power either, which is sort of confusing. I think it's safe to say that this game doesn't have cumulative damage modeling. I mean, I don't think it'd be a good idea to like drive up to any of the buildings like this. It certainly isn't good to go around from one building to another with it. No. So our original intended purpose with it is definitely not a good idea. Unless uh, somebody tells me what numbers I should punch in. Oh, that is not the way I wanted to go. Heck, with the way it's spun out on Kerbin, I don't know if I want to get close to anything in particular anyway. Somebody in the comments to a Realism Overhaul video a while back asked whether me spending so much time making mods and doing Realism Overhaul hurt my ability to play stock. No. Not really. I want to get it right in the middle of everything. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, it, it's, it actually is getting dangerous enough, I think. Um, no, but yeah, we definitely want to go go over here. It said 45 meters per second of crash impact tolerance, right? When we checked the info for the rover cabin. I mean, I mean that tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> okay, so it's here. We'll put on the brakes. It's arrived. It has arrived. So yeah, let, let, let's get let's get the the screenshot of this. Totally doesn't work right, but yeah, it is here. Let's turn off SAS so it stops making that sound. And Tim is here. I forgot to put the ladder on the door. But anyway, yeah, I've got a few things, but I'm gonna need viewer help to try and figure out whether we can make this work the way it's supposed to, or whether it's stuck being like this, a rover via tumble. So yeah, I'll actually leave it there and get your comments on this. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.